So I'm just going to give a brief overview about uh, superficial femoral artery angioplasty, uh, different access routes, and how best we can uh, do in case of long segment, short segment, flush occlusions, and repeated interventions. So as it goes for any, any endovascular or vascular procedure, knowledge of anatomy of that particular region is of utmost importance. We all know, uh, all the trainees uh, would be getting this in their exam also. And we all very well know the vein is the medial most structure, then the artery and the nerve. So whenever uh, we are uh, planning to do a pun femoral puncture, femoral access, we need to know this anatomy very well so that we don't make any mistakes or multiple punctures repeatedly. So this is how it works. Uh, to understand the basic anatomy till inguinal ligament, we consider that as an external iliac artery. Below, extra, below, below the inguinal ligament, it changes its name to common femoral artery, which divides into uh, superficial femoral artery and deep femoral artery, also known as profunda femoris artery. So like whenever we are planning to do a retrograde femoral artery puncture, we need to understand few basics about it and how, how best we can make a puncture of a common femoral artery. So there are, there are three ways that we can take a femoral artery access, retrograde femoral artery access. It is very important to know and puncture at the correct site of the femoral artery because studies have shown that whenever there is a deviation from the landmarks and the puncture done at any other site than the recommended sites, complication rate is almost 18%. So we need to we need to understand where exactly we are going to puncture. Now there are three ways that we can do that anatomical guidelines. So if you do a fluoroscopy, you will see that the femoral head, the medial most part of the femoral head, one centimeter lateral to it. If you puncture, usually you will hit the common femoral artery. Another is the best palpable site. When you palpate your femoral artery, you will feel that the pulsation are the best at particular region and that is how we puncture. Not exactly the way or the 100% surety. The best way to puncture a common femoral artery is under Doppler guidance. When you do that under Doppler guidance, there are some advantage. You exactly know where you are going to enter. You exactly know that your needle is into the artery and you do not do a counter puncture. So like studies also have shown that Doppler guided femoral artery puncture is of utmost importance. It improves the first pass, like the, the study that said that multiple puncture has a complication. If it is not a first pass and then wire is stuck somewhere, you, you carry a risk of dissecting that femoral artery. And so this is very important that you make a clean puncture when you are taking a access. You must remember that your puncture has to be in common femoral artery. Now there will be some conditions wherein it will be little difficult at times, very obese patient, when the skin fold or the lower abdomen is falling over the upper thigh and some you will have to ask your assistant to retract the abdomen and do the puncture. When there are repeated interventions done at that site, when there is a fibrosis, and you will find it difficult to puncture. So there are small tricks and uh, and the secrets of doing this kind of punctures. Whenever there is a previous wound in this area, or if multiple punctures are already done, what we do is either you can make a small puncture with 80, a small skin puncture with the 18 gauge needle and then try and put your femoral puncture needle or you give a nick beforehand so that like that skin puncture when you do with your femoral artery puncture needle it doesn't distort or it doesn't give a jerk so these are few basics that like one should observe when we are doing a common femoral artery excess puncture um, in a hurry, whenever we enter in a cath lab, we are in a hurry to have an access and wire across. But perhaps this is the equally important step 
of a successful angioplasty, a successful clean access. So this is again the site that shows that this is the area that you should be puncturing. It shouldn't be above, below. It shouldn't go above the inguinal ligament. Otherwise, it carries the retroperitoneal hematoma risk. If it is lower down, it carries the risk of ischemia lower down because artery gets smaller. So it has to be in a common femoral artery below the inguinal ligament. Ideal femoral artery puncture site is the common femoral artery, as I mentioned, approximately one centimeter lateral to the most medial aspect of femoral head. And it has to be midway between its superior and inferior borders. And this is known as Roop's rule. So this is how these are some pictures uh, where we have taken a common femoral artery puncture. If you see at uh, the relation with the femoral head, it is approximately 1 to 1.5 centimeters away from the most medial margin of the head of the femur. These are some cases that we have done with the retrograde axis. When you want to cross the aorta, when you want to go on the other side, and then you cross the wire, uh, cross the lesion and do the angioplasty. Now, there are, there are some problems with this. If the iliac confluence is very acute, if previously somebody has put stents in it, and if the carina is little higher, wherein like you will be, it will be difficult to pass a wire across the aorta and the opposite side iliac artery. So you have to keep this in mind. You have to have a previous angiogram, CT angio, have a clear view that you will be able to cross and take an, go on the other side and cross the lesion. If you are not very sure, then you have to defer the idea of having this access and you have to think of something else. So this was the case wherein we went from right side to the left side. It was the osteal occlusion of superficial femoral artery. Once you have crossed and you have placed your sheath, the long sheath. Again, I want to mention few things about sheath. Whenever you are putting a long sheath, I usually prefer destination. That is 45 centimeter, six French sheath. Very, very nice, smooth and easy to cross over uh, the aorta in most cases. Ideally, you have to put a stiffer wire before you guide your longer sheath. Once you have crossed the sheath, then most things become little easy. Now, crossing the, the osteal occlusions. When, first of all, you have to decide from where exactly the superficial femoral artery is starting. Then you can place your straight catheter or a curved catheter. Usually, you can try with the JT35-260 Tarumo standard wire that we regularly use and use torker. And you will be able to enter the superficial femoral artery. At times, this may not happen and your wire will keep going into profunda. Now, multiple passes in profunda also has a problem that carries the risk of injuring the ostium of profunda, getting it occluded, and then there will be a massive ischemia in the lower limb. So sometimes we use the, the stiffer end or the other end of the tarumo wire just to make a small dent in the superficial femoral artery. Now this, you have to be very careful because this can rupture the artery, it can go out of the artery and you wouldn't know. So, but you will have that giveaway feeling whenever you are using the reverse end of the tarumo wire and when you poke the superficial femoral artery, you will have that nice giveaway feeling. Once you feel that, just advance your catheter a little bit into the head of the superficial femoral artery Take a little bit of contrast and take a shoot and you would know that you are in the lumen and not outside the lumen. And after that, most of the things are easy. You just have to keep advancing your wire and keep advancing your catheter. If it is a very long segment occlusion, like in this patient, he had occlusion from the origin of superficial femoral artery till the adductor canal. <clears throat> in that case, when you are advancing your femoral, uh, your tarumo wire, you, you will see that you, you are forming a loop and that is how the wire will advance. You constantly have to watch your loop. If it is getting wider and wider, that means there is some problem, you should stop there. 
your catheter, whichever the catheter you are using. My choice for crossover femoral angioplasty is 5 French 100 centimeter STR. For this catheter, which is very nice and smooth and it goes in very nicely and easily. You have to keep your catheter very close to your wire and that is how you should advance. Take small injections in between so that you know that you are not somewhere out of the artery or you are not in any of the branches. Once you re-enter the popliteal artery anywhere, P1, P2 or P3, again you will have that giveaway feeling and then wire will smoothly pass into tibials and that is where you know that you have re-entered. And then you can use your choice of balloons and do the or finish the angioplasty. Coming to anti-grade femoral artery access. Now, when do we choose the anti-grade access? There are some indications of choosing anti-grade femoral artery access and some advantages of using this access. It has a better support and higher propensity to cross the complex lesions. It can reach even distal pedal arteries easily. Like if you have a combined tibial and femoral artery disease and if you want to do a tibial angioplasty also, then it is useful than the contralateral approach. It has small learning curve, but I'm very sure with the practice it can be learned very well and most of the students will be easily able to take these access. I actually enjoy doing anti-grade femoral artery access for uh, the femoral artery angioplasty. There are three reasons why I enjoy. It uses less hardware, it uses less contrast, and it, it is fast, quick, and you, you don't have to use a lot of radiation. Now, there are some, there are some rules when you, whenever you, want, you decide on anti-grade femoral access, technical considerations. If the previous imaging study shows that there is no, not enough landing zone, like you have to know that superficial femoral artery has at least a length which will accommodate your sheath. If it is not so, then it is little difficult to use this. There are some operators, there are some uh, very senior and experienced operators who use this access even in flush superficial femoral artery uh, occlusions. But for the learning purpose, when you start taking this access, you make sure that you have a good landing zone for your sheath. And that's how you should take your initial view of the cases. Now, the sheath tip has to be in the superficial femoral artery. So, commonly, the, the sheath that we use, I prefer Tarumo sheath, which is about 6 to 9 uh, length. And so, you have to judge that it will at least have a place to sit in the superficial femoral artery and do the procedure. Now, while doing anti-grade puncture, where do you stand? I always prefer to stand on the left and, and do the puncture. I pass a wire, ask a technician to check my wire site, and that's how I know that it is in the superficial femoral artery, and then only I advance the sheath. Now there are some there are some radiological fluoroscopic points which will give you an idea that you are in superficial femoral artery and not in profunda. And this is true almost 90% of the times. When you pass a wire in superficial femoral artery, it will go away from the bone. It will be away from the femur. If it is in profunda, it will go towards the femur and at some point it will cross the femur. Then you should know that your wire is in profunda and not in superficial femoral artery. Another thing, most of the time, 90% of the time, your wire will not, will not cross the head of the femur. It will be little away from the head of the femur and that is another sign that your wire is in superficial femoral artery and not profunda. But still, like you must confirm it before you put a sheath and give heparin. Uh, that your sheath is in superficial femoral and not in the profunda. So to understand this, like if you if you if you know the anatomy, you would know that your puncture is usually little higher than the standard retrograde approach. 
so many a times it will happen that you will have to ask your assistant to hold the lower abdominal fold and you are puncturing many a times it will happen that the needle going inside the femoral artery will be almost at a right angle and then passing a wire may not be that smooth what you can do is you can always try and rotate your needle you can always try and use a softer wire before putting in the the harder wire and that is how you can you have less chances of injuring the artery and forming a hematoma one thing you must always remember when you are doing anti grade access if you have failed once if you have failed twice then there will be a small hematoma at that point and then taking an anti grade access is always a problem so take 5 minutes be at ease take deep breath and then only do your first puncture first successful puncture is the key for anti grade access this is how i do uh, i always stand on the left side if you have a doppler support it is well and good and you would know where your wire is going i prefer to do it on fluoroscopy and usually it works now a, a a situation where you have punctured and your wire has gone into the deep femoral artery what what are the ways you can do or how you can get into the superficial femoral artery there are some techniques uh, well explained and they most of the times they work but first of all you don't need to panic so one wire if it has gone into the deep femoral artery keep that wire there only select a smaller size sheath four or five french put a sheath inside take out the stilet then pull your sheath little back into the common femoral artery take a small shoot with 1 ml of contrast and you would know that your sheath is in common femoral artery you will be able to see the opening of superficial femoral artery put another wire you most of the times you will see that that wire goes into the superficial femoral artery advance the sheath put that stilet back again confirm that it is in the superficial femoral artery then if you need to change it with the higher size sheath you can maybe 6 french take out the profunda wire and you can proceed with the procedure when you have successfully punctured the artery and if it is in profunda and if you take out the wire and needle and everything and try and puncture again it is always a problem as i said there will always be a small hematoma there will always be a difficult puncture blood that comes will not be a frank good flow and you will keep poking and there are chances that you will injure that femoral artery so as i said do not panic don't don't worry about losing that access you already have a wire in your profunda you are not going to lose the access have two or three things with you like at that time don't remember that you need a four french or five french sheet ask somebody to run for that have it by the side of the table ask somebody to open put a sheet and then try and do the maneuver i explained and 90 to 95% of the time you will be successful having your sheath in the superficial femoral artery so if the puncture is too low in the common femoral artery it is the natural direction when you whenever you are doing anti grade puncture it is the natural direction of a femoral uh, of of the wire that it will go into the profunda so you have to decide you need at least 1 and 1/2 to 2 cm of length in common femoral artery to have a good access good wire passing into the superficial femoral artery if this does not happen then there are some other mechanical maneuvers you can externally ro rotate the thigh you can make knee bend at 60 degrees and then try and puncture you can ask your assistant to hold the leg out of the table and then puncture these are the ways but as i said with the experience you will learn what works always have have good position that you are standing the monitor that you are seeing and the doppler where it is holding and ask your assistant constantly to watch the flow 
ready with the other wire and that is how you will have less problems while having these axes. So you take a baseline angio, either you can put a micropuncture sheet or then change it with the standard sheet that we use. Again, the choice of wire for us is usually 35 Tarumo J tip and it usually works in almost 90, 95% of the cases. Successful vascular access is a key to good hemostasis also. Now there are some there are some rules and problems that happen whenever there are multiple punctures at this site. Whenever you have tried to put wire multiple times and you have failed, and then you have finally succeeded in getting an access, done the procedure, taken out the sheath, but you will face problems. So there are some keys. If sheath comes out earliest. Like if your procedural time, less the procedural time, less the complications. Less manipulation of this sheet. You have to ask your assistant, whenever you are trying to put a catheter and wire, you will see that the sheet is lifted from the thigh, from the upper thigh. That should not happen because that will make the arterial hole bigger. So you, you constantly need to ask your assistant to hold the sheet in the position. Whenever you are trying to pass a catheter, you have successfully passed a catheter. It, it's a moment of like, like victory. You are in a hurry to put a balloon and get on with the job. While taking out the supporting catheter, I have seen many times that with that sheath also comes out. You are in a mass again. There will be a bleed, then there will be ecchymosis post procedure. So you have to ask your assistant to hold the sheet when you are taking out the support catheter to exchange it with your balloon. Very important step with anti-grade access that sheet does not move from its side. So this is where exactly your puncture should be and how your wire should pass. As I said, you need to know the length of the femoral artery that is available to you to put a sheet. If there is a lot of calcium and if there is a lot of plagues in the proximal superficial femoral artery. You always carry a risk of showering them in the distal circulation. Patient will have problem post-operatively, so you have to be careful when you pass the wire with this puncture. So as I said, wire is in the femoral artery. You take a shoot. Sometimes you will feel that, okay, the size of femoral artery, uh, deep femoral artery is so big. It looks like superficial femoral artery and, and you will put a bigger sheath and then you would realize that it is not in the superficial femoral artery. Always be careful, take a run, not just a static shoot, so that you would know that it is not in the superficial femoral artery, but in the profunda. So these are the ways that your needle can enter into the common femoral artery when you are taking an anti-grade access. I have seen operators using superficial femoral artery for this access. Not, not a very safe practice. I usually avoid doing that. It is always safer to have a common femoral access. It is a big size artery, can accommodate the, the, the sheath well. You also will have some idea about the profunda. You can protect profunda. Sometimes if you need to do a profunda angioplasty, it will be easier for you to do that. And so always safer to have a common femoral access than the superficial femoral artery access. So these are some examples of the anti-grade uh, femoral artery puncture, short segment superficial femoral artery occlusion balloon and the result after that. As I said, other another advantage, very less contrast. I usually uh, finish the femoral isolated femoral artery angioplasty with five or 10 ml of contrast. It is very important for all trainees to realize that do not keep taking shoots repeatedly to confirm the size of the balloon, to confirm the lesion, to mark the lesion. You, you should understand it beforehand that it is this much. In first shoot itself, you should be able to judge that you will need see this size of the balloon and so that you don't keep giving contrast. We all know the peripheral vascular disease patients will have some comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, borderline CKD. 
I, my policy is always to limit the contrast to its minimum. I have procedures wherein we have completed the procedure with 5 ml of contrast. You don't, you don't need uh, 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 pictures which are worthy of putting on YouTube or somewhere. If you are happy in your completion shoot, don't try and give a lot of contrast to take better pictures. Another case where there was a total popliteal artery occlusion at the knee joint, reformation of tibioperoneal trunk, uh, we passed the wire and we could get away with uh, good angioplasty result. Third access for femoral artery angioplasty. Now this is the trickiest access, but I, I love doing this access in specific conditions. Not very difficult to learn this. Only thing is you have your selection of patient has to be very, very good. And then only you should venture into these access. As I said, you need to know the anatomy very well. We all know the popliteal artery is the most anterior structure of the popliteal fossa. Anterior to popliteal artery, there is nothing but popliteous muscle, bone, at the lower end of the femur, and knee joint. That's it. Back of the popliteal artery, there is vein, then there is nerve, then there is soft tissue, and skin. So, it is like anterior to posterior. Uh, it is in one line. So, when you are doing a popliteal access, you have to realize this, that you are, you are trying to puncture the farthest structure from the skin. So, you must know your anatomy very well before you undertake a popliteal puncture access for femoral artery angioplasty. Um, as I mentioned, this is, this is sitting anteroposterior. Okay, so whenever you, okay. So in this picture, if you see, the, the lowermost hollow is artery, then vein, and the white structure that you see is now. Like you have to know that there is a now when you puncture, if your needle goes through now patient, usually will recover, yeah? But patient will have anesthesia for quite some time. And especially if your sheath stays in for a long period of time, patient will have some problems. So you have to try and avoid these structures when you are doing this popliteal artery access. I'll tell you how I do, and there is a small area which is like not lying deepest in that, and it is directly puncturable from the popliteal fossa. Now, whenever you are puncturing popliteal artery, you will face five different scenarios. These are the types of uh, CTOs that you will see in, pop, in, in that region. You have to know what kind of lesion you are treating, and that makes the best usage of the hardware, selection of the hardware, so that you don't juggle with the variety of things in between the procedures. As we all know, it is the continuation of femoral artery, deepest structure in the popliteal fossa. You must know the branches of popliteal artery very well. Sural artery, genicular arteries, anterior and posterior tibial artery. Genicular artery has six branches. So every time you take an access, if you have punctured something, there are chances of hematoma in that popliteal fossa, which is a very narrow, packed space and if there is even 10 or 15 ml of blood collected patient will have a lot of pain postoperatively so as i said on top of the the slide if you see white structure that is now then there is vein and the lowermost structure is artery now you have to puncture this so if you see the cross section of any of the ct of this region you will realize that there is a short around one inch to 1.5 inch reach, uh, the segment of popliteal artery which is bare which is not crossed by popliteal vein or the nerve and that is the site you should be able to puncture you will very well see this on doppler so doppler is something that is very important to understand the anatomy of popliteal fossa even when you are not doing this angioplasty in wards also you constantly should practice this. You have to make patient lie down in prone position, try and put a probe in popliteal fossa, 
and you would slowly start understanding that anatomy and exact location where you want to puncture. What are the indications of popliteal access? It's not that like it is very routinely commonly done. There are some special occasions that you need to take that access. You must be aware. Failed anti-grade attempt. You have an anti-grade access and there is that tip that you are unable to cross because of calcification, because of whatever the reason, then you can take popliteal access. Flush SFA occlusion is another indication. If patient has iliac and femoral lesions, and if contralateral side is not available, then you can take popliteal access, finish off both the lesions and do the angioplasty of iliac and femoral together. Previous surgeries, very scar tissue, lot of fibrosis, in groin, then you can take the popliteal artery access. Graft and obesity makes other indications for popliteal artery access. It is safe and viable option. Now, there are two ways that you can puncture popliteal artery. My preference most of the time is prone position. Then, uh, because I have a very nice clean puncture, I can press it well. And so, I usually prefer that. But sometimes it will happen. That patient is in supine position. You already have a common femoral access either from contralateral side or the anti-grid. You already are down with the wire, but it is not crossing and you are forced to take a popliteal access. Then yes, you can take popliteal access in supine position. There are two ways that you can do. I'll just explain. That technique is also known as a stirrup method or rotisserie method. What they do is, you can ask your assistant to just lift the leg, do the Doppler, just medial to the lower condyle of the femur, and you will see a femoral artery. Take a shoot from top, you will see some contrast trickling into the popliteal artery, and then try and hit the artery, and you will be successful in taking an access in supine position. Now, this should not be tried in very obese patients very irritable patients and like the patients who already have a lot of distal ischemia or infection. But yes, it is a well-described procedure to take the medial axis uh, of the popliteal artery in supine position. So these are some uh, examples where we have taken a, a popliteal axis. This was, of course, a prone position. You can see the sheath inside the popliteal fossa in popliteal artery and then completion angiogram. This is another case where we were forced to take a popliteal access. Uh, so this was this is the typical case. Uh, very acute angles of iliac going from contralateral side, not very nice, good looking idea. So we decided that we'll take a popliteal access and do the angioplasty. This is how I, this is a small video showing how I try and take the popliteal puncture and wire. Again, my preferred cheat is Tarumo. You, you have to, you will get used to using different cheats. You will realize the difference between cheats and you will realize the difference of which sheath is good in what kind of lesion. Tarumo sheath is always preferred because I like that sheath for a few reasons. The tip of the stilet is very smooth. Sometimes even without like in putting an incision at skin, your sheath will go in because and then it gives a good hemostasis. And that's why I prefer Tarumo sheath. Again, it is a shorter sheath. Then you don't need a very long inside the popliteal artery. And that is why I prefer Tarumo sheath. You can see my needle uh, calcium in that popliteal artery making a puncture and then you have to check the flow that yes, it is an arterial flow, uh, blood color and then you can put a softer wire and you would know that you are inside the popliteal artery. Once you are successfully inside the popliteal artery, I have, I have realized this, that crossing the femoral artery uh, superficial femoral artery occlusion uh, from above or from the contralateral side. It is easier to cross SFA when you have a popliteal access. Easier to do an angioplasty through popliteal access once you have a successful popliteal access. 
this was another case uh, short segment lesion and a completion angiogram thank you i will take questions and queries if any